Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Jessica Clemens here to break down episode seven of She-Hulk for you. We spent some time back with Emil Blonsky getting a gander at the retreat we've heard so much about. We're introduced to the best damn group of friends a girl can have. And this episode really sums up my late 20s. So let's get into it. God, this episode really, really just came for me. I did not like it. Uh, anyways, we open up to a shot of Jen's bathroom, which is gorgeous. This is a God's eye view in filmmaking. It captures the overhead angle directly above the subject, hence the name God's view. Most commonly used in Wes Anderson movies, I genuinely love this. Though it makes you feel unfamiliar with the character, I think it opens the space for you to interpret so much more about them. Their movements, the environment, and how they maneuver in set space, etc. These are the kind of great shots for visual storytelling that I love. And kind of like in Miss Marvel, we're getting the floating bubble text. We see it's a text message from Josh, the man she met at Lulu's wedding last episode, and I hate him. Now, I think we already have a right to be suspicious of him with this weird message he sends to Jen. And Jen's like, how do you know what neighborhood I live in? He's a sketchy dude. Also. Confirm Jen lives near West Hollywood in the Fairfax area with that 90036 zip code. So no wonder she likes to party and has money. Jen listening to Spotify and this song really opens up the episode. It looks like she's listening to FUBT from Haim's recent album, Women in Music Part 3. But what we really hear is Now I'm In It, the bonus track to that album. The opening line is literally about waking up, looking in the mirror and not recognizing yourself. Haim said it's almost like every existential crisis. You're like, this person is me, but I don't recognize myself. So I think this is perfect mapping to Jen right now. This shot of Jen's bathroom and bedroom and this single dolly shot around her house is Ooh, chef kiss. The shot I'd call sort of a tracking shot. Most tracking shots, the camera is following the character, but this feels more like Jen is following the camera. Either way, it immediately reminded me of the breakup scene in I, Tanya with Goodbye Stranger, how the camera pans through the entire apartment, different shots of Sebastian Stan just spiraling. This shot is completely thematically pleasing. The two shots definitely are perfect for expressing the duration of time that's been spent contemplating and just waiting. I would love to just talk to this DP and director about these shots because this is giving six 16 candles, the, yeah, you. Is it our Jake? Absolutely not. I hate Josh and I hope he dies. Presumably their first date is a taco truck, which you can see the QR code. This week's comic leads you to Tales to Astonish, came out in 1959, issue number 48, Ant-Man and the Wasp Battle the Porcupine for free. Oh, I hit that note. <laughs> okay. And when she goes home, they awkwardly shake hands goodbye. This guy has Jen distracted. Texting under the table during a meeting? They go to a flea market and doesn't that dog just look like Jonathan? And then there's no sexy time. No sexy time here. They go to a drive-in, they have a great time, and then there is sexy time. The next day, it's Friday. Josh is just gone, which would piss me off, but Jen is just happy for now. Jen is wearing a nice plum suit that's similar to her iconic purple suit in the comics. And Josh still hasn't responded because he sucks. We're at GLK and H. Nikki comments that Jen's been nominated as SCL Female Lawyer of the Year, which is the gala that she attends in the sparkly dress that we see from the trailer. It actually stands for Southern California Law Awards. We also think at the same time as that trailer, we get these guys with the same looking machine that sent those sort of high pitch frequencies that worked on Hulk up until it didn't. So this could be another setup or, you know, fingers crossed, this is where she's just planning to meet Daredevil. Please, I just don't want another setup. My heart can't take it anymore. Nikki says this. Oh, are you going down a rabbit hole on that intelligentsia site? If you remember the last episode, this is the website that spews trash on women, specifically She-Hulk, and even trades knowledge on how and if you can harm her. Mallory didn't want her mentioning the site to Jen, and Nikki, as a best friend, immediately calls her and leaves her a voicemail telling her exactly what it is. But Jen's clearly not phased because she's got bigger things on her mind, if you get what I'm saying. Ugh, why am I complimenting him? I hate him. I love that it's now just a joke for Jen to say she'd Hulk smash the trolls on the internet like Hulk didn't do absolute hardcore damage. Also, Nikki's notepad just says, get it done, with a couple of notes, and I love her even more. Jen's getting a little pissed and a little scary in this shot that gives me the same heebie-jeebies from the beginning of A Clockwork Orange. She's gone mad. God, this is completely me. Her phone transitions into her TV where she's watching the great Muppet caper. Jen's about to break out of this prison just like Miss Piggy. The next morning, Jen is woken up by a Mills Pro officer, Chuck Donnellan, played by John Prusio. I hope I pronounced that right. Who works for the California Department of Corrections. You can also see on her nightstand the books for Behold the Dreamers and In Cold Blood, which I think is Truman Capote, and I, I just love her. This entire conversation with Chuck is 
only looking for sweets and the balloons behind him say happy retirement so someone definitely has cake there. She's on her way to see a meal through Malibu Canyon and on the way she can't stop checking her phone to see if Josh has responded but she does take a break and listen to mm bop by Hanson and I feel it. We reach the retreat and from the outside it looks massive. It's called Summer Twilights and Chuck refers to her as the Jolly Green which I assume the Jolly Green Giant, another nickname for the books and I love that she corrects and confirms it is hulking out instead of turning into a Jolly Green suit or whatever. I, I, I just like her correcting people. So Chuck is fixing a Mills inhibitor that he messed up when touching the electric fence his favorite chicken was stuck in, Princess Silk Feathers. So yeah, that story sounds completely made up, but maybe, maybe he is that cartoony. The only reason I'm led to believe that Emil is lying is because we see him in the mid-season trailer as Abomination. So perhaps he's been changing back and forth, but also let's know that in that mid-season trailer, only men are high-fiving him. And we've been watching the show, so we can't trust most of the men on it. So it's a little bit off, but I just want us to keep it noted. Not long after Chuck leaves, we're introduced to Manbull, played by Nathan Hurd, and El Aguila, played by Joseph Castillo. In the comics, Manbull, aka William Torrens, was injected with a special serum by the professor who was instructed by Mr. Klein. This serum was based on bull enzymes, which mutated him into a half man, half bull, hence the name man bull. As for El Aguila, aka Alejandro Montoya, he's a mutant, a mutant, a mutant, a mutant you say? And he can shoot bioelectric energy blasts, but he would use his sword to control that energy blast. He's a skilled fencer, an acrobat, though some see him as an underwhelming character, he's actually really, really cool and basically played Robin Hood to all the people in New York. And he's a swashbuckler, dang it. If you don't know what that is, it's a person who engages in daring and romantic adventures with bravado or flamboyance. Make him my man. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, so Summer Twilight is huge. They even have a sweat yurt. And this one could be a ceremonial sweat lodge. A yurt also looks like this. Usually made up of all natural materials similar to tents, but much, much bigger. A lot of people even live in them now. They're super cool. When Jen has had enough and is looking for service, the song playing is Peppers and Onions by Tierra Whack. Basically about figuring things out for yourself and just being a human, which Jen will do shortly. Jen wanders into the real retreat Emil was talking about. We immediately see the goddess Sarah Sweetie. We see the seize your true power, abomaste, a play on namaste. I also like abominasty. I wish they would have kept that. Achieve everything, some Hindu worship practices, a jar full of bills that says chicken jar. In a better shot later, we see Blonsky's proverbs, today is today, and make your goal a reality. We also see Lord Ganesh. Behind a mill, you see coffee, photos of himself. It looks like a self-help money bag retreat. He's just like making money off these folks, maybe. I don't want to believe he's bad. I really want to believe Emil's good now, but I don't know. You can't trust anyone. One. Uh, it's like they're all scrolls. We've met Manbull and Aguila, but we haven't met Porcupine, played by Jordan Aaron Ford. There are two people that wore the Porcupine suit. The OG Porcupine, Alex Gentry, and currently Roger Gawking, who bought the suit off of Hobgoblin. The OG Porcupine was a weapon designer and made their intense suit covered in quills that was able to shoot gas as chemicals and the quills sometimes. He made this suit for the government, but when he knew they wouldn't pay him as much as the suit was worth, he just engaged in his own money-filled crimes, and I kind of like that. Saracen, played by by Terrence Clo, aka Muzafar Lambert, in some parts. There's two Saracens in Marvel Comics. Muzafar is a mercenary and assassin that we first set up in the Punisher series, while Saracen is one of the first vampires on Earth. We first met him in Blade Vampire Hunter issue number one, so that could be the reason why Emil's confusion on whether he's a vampire or not. Jen breaks the fourth wall for the first time this episode to remind us that that dummy that tried jumping her in the Wrecking Crew from episode three is here. Also, they did previously on him, but in episode four and slightly in episode six, and I don't care. I still think he's a villain on the down low. He was one of the people that ushered her to delete Josh's number first, maybe to lose evidence. Also, I believe in people changing, but Jen, this guy was clearly working for something bigger. Talk to him, investigate him. Let's take a break because you know why? Be sure to head over to newrockstarsmerch.com to grab our latest obsession shirt, Lady Justice, inspired by the She-Hulk Attorney at Law series. This shirt is a limited edition, and when you purchase it, you unlock the ability to get a custom shout out from me and Tier Voss that will appear right here on Inside Marvel. Not here, but you know, I'm inside Marvel. It came out yesterday. Support the channel. Check out all of our awesome merch options over at newrockstarsmerch.com. And just have a ball, you guys. Have a ball. She-Hulk is more than a pretty face. In fact, right now, I want to talk about her hair. It's gorgeous. If you want gorgeous hair, you should check out geology. And you know I love geology. I put it all over my body. And I know you're all thinking, geology? Isn't that about 13 times award-winning skincare company with over 5,000 five-star reviews? Yes, they are. But now they do hair too. And I'm super excited about it. 
it. Geology has a new custom control hair care line with brand new co-wash. Co-wash is the anti-shampoo. Shampoo strips your hair of the essential oils of the scalp produces and can leave your hair and scalp too dry, like the Sahara. Typical shampoos use harsh chemicals to clean your hair. Co-wash uses friction and scrubbing motion to remove dirt and grime from your scalp, and I know you guys got dirty heads. Keeping your hair clean and healthy without damaging it in the process. And let me tell you, I know a lot about damaged hair. Good hair comes with having healthy scalp. Co-wash focuses on cleansing and nourishing the scalp, removing buildup, and cleansing the hair without big lather, harsh ingredients, or stripping your hair of its natural oils. Nobody wants to strip anything of anything. Co-wash puts you 100% in control of your clean based on how much product you use, how long you use it, and how often you apply it. Think of co-wash as a skincare for your scalp and your hair. Two in one. No. Because ultimately, hair care is skincare. <laughs> The more you know. Geology hair products are great for all hair types and are color safe. And you can either get a cooling co-wash with tea tree and aloe or a smoothing co-wash with avocado and coconut. I'm a tea tree and aloe kind of person. Why? Because you can never be too cool. Yeah. To celebrate the launch of their new product, they are hooking you up with the unbelievable special offer. Click the link below to get 70% off your skincare trial. 70% off, 70's a lot. That's how old Eric Voss is. Use the second link to take an additional 15% off the new co-wash. That's how old I am. Which is already 15% off your pre-order. You are not going to want to miss this offer, you guys. It's great. In a very dad manner, Emil says, look at you, you are glued to that thing. This isn't the first dad behavior Jen's got from clients. Come on, I feel like your dad. When they start giving her group advice, it hits way too close to home. I've texted someone, I can't stop smiling. Is that bad? Is that horrible? I thought that was a nice thing to say. I've said that before and this episode just hits me in different feels. I love everybody here. Everybody in this group, except for the record. I love everyone. But Saracen is definitely by far my favorite. With this call out about the blood, okay, did we or did we not say he's trying to get her DNA? Josh was completely just trying to get her blood. Saracen may be a weirdo to some, but he's on the money. He wanted her blood and I just love the call out. How can you hate the speech that Jen gives? How can people not like Jen? This scene when Jen explains having to be Jen or She-Hulk when she is Jen through and through. And when she said, Jen is great. I was clapping. I was so happy. I was watching this by myself in my house and I was so ecstatic. Cause look, we've all been ghost at least once. And if you haven't, great, but I have. And it sucks. It hurts. Especially when you give this person everything of you. So this speech of never finding someone to like both sides of herself is great and eye opener, and I'm sure what a lot of us needed. And like a Gila said, Josh has made an enemy of this entire group. Josh has made an enemy of this entire group. Also, I just love this group of men, except for maybe Wrecker, but the rest are great. Not only did Wrecker straight up say it smells like a fart when Parcupine took off his mask, but my baby boy said, what, am I ashy? Baby, be for real. With all that moisture locked in that suit, oh. I, I feel like they're improvising everything and I love it. Peep Jen's contacts in her phone. There's a lot of people and I'm gonna go through them each because I'm a weirdo. Scott Jacobs is an editor for She-Hulk. Luke Jacobson is the designer that made her outfits. Wendy Jacobson is a co-EP on She-Hulk. Jamie, this could be Jamie Hallett, the VFX supervisor. Giselle Johnson, the director of post-production streaming at Marvel Studios. Jesse Johnson, the VFX PA. Jessica, it just says Jessica. This could be me, but I, I, it probably isn't. It's probably Jessica Gao. Some people have speculated it could be Jessica Jones since it's where her last name would be, but it's also in alphabetical order if her last name was missing. So it's still kind of up in the air. Justison, Justison, Pratt and Anderson. It's probably Shannon Justison, the VFX supervisor, Sarah Pratt, the VFX coordinator. Anderson could be a few folks. The set dresser, Michelle Anderson, comic writer, Bill Anderson, Craig Anderson, the list goes on. Mike Kemmins, though, is a VFX editor on She-Hulk. Kat is probably Kat Coro. Kelly could be for Kelly Alyssa Cunningham that works in the editorial department for She-Hulk. Adam Kemmerlin is another editor at Marvel. Doran Kipper, who was the data wrangler for She-Hulk. Canuck, I hope I pronounced that right, who I assume is Robert Canuck, a VFX supervisor at Marvel. If you're in VFX, this is the perfect time to just slide in your own little Easter eggs. We get a shout out to Slot Towing, a nod to Dan Slot's comic run of Sensational She-Hulk. I tried calling the number attached to Slot's towing company and it leads nowhere, so don't even bother. We pull out to Dua Lipa's IDGAF because I'm not gonna say the F word. A song about a breakup where she owes her ex-boyfriend nothing. She doesn't care. Like Jen, as she rides away with Dan, the tow truck driver. It looks like his name is Dan on the badge. Might be Danny. I'll just give it to Dan for Dan Slot. Three days earlier and oh, we 
knew it. We knew Josh was a low down, dirty, sneaky, gremlin looking, no faith having ass hat working for that damn Hulk King. He's copying all of Jen's information from her phone and snapped a photo of her because he's a monster and a creep. Though this could be proof that he did the job, I could see this monster posting this photo on the Intelligentsia website later. I hope not, but they just want to destroy her and her career. Then he sends three emojis like Jen did earlier about the fries, confirming he's got the real blood. In our recent episode of Inside Marvel, Voss speculates Josh got her blood with a syringe while she was asleep because we see two moles on her back that could be markings from the syringe. Voss did a deep dive of Tatiana Maslany's shoulders and he said she has no moles, so it could be valid and true. I think it's wild, but yeah, he could be right. New courtroom illustrations we have are Aguila in college, his letterman's jacket that says Matador and JV. We have a hallway of party goers and a man clearly impersonating a bull, but those ears are giving Loki. Jed and the gang, but you know, not that kind of gang, meditating in what I assume is the yurt. Porcupine getting his stinky suit dry clean. You guys, that's everything I spotted in episode seven of She-Hulk. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Lulu underscore Clemens. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for more breakdowns of everything you love. Thanks for watching, and I'm hurting for a yurtin', baby. Wow! <laughs>